Today we are doing a video over our new jetter machine here. Uh, this is a Spartan 727. Um, we do have all the um, uh, technical parts and we have a few printouts over here of what everything it does has all the manuals and everything like that. These will more than likely be coming with the machine, um, but right now you can get them in a PDF or in a paper uh, copy. So today I'm gonna be showing you step-by-step step what it is that you're expected to do when you're running the machine uh, to get it started up, run it, and actually shut it down and properly use it. Um, so today what we're gonna start with is our first step is usually you're gonna be actually getting the jetter loading it on your truck. Uh, when you first get it, you're gonna wanna check and make sure that you have all your tools. Um, your parts that are gonna come with it are gonna be this orange box, and it's gonna have all these different tips and tools that come with the actual jetter. It's gonna have a pair of gloves, a couple extra tools to work with it, and you're also gonna need a gas can because this is a gas-powered engine. It is not a mixed gas, it is a regular gas engine. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have fuel for it, all your materials, a few extra things you're gonna to wanna to carry are some uh, cleaning towels, some regular blue towels, and some gloves, because this thing's gonna be going places that you're gonna to wanna to have gloves touching. Um, so once you have all those materials, you're gonna to get to your job, shot, your job site, you're going to have this secured inside of the vehicle. You're gonna to wanna to put a ratchet strap or a bungee, something along that line, making sure it's not bouncing around while you're driving. Um, once you get there, your first steps are gonna be actually getting the machine off properly and safely get it to where you need to be within feet of where you're actually jetting and then you're going to uh, just kind of do a once over of the machine again make sure that everything looks like it's in the proper positions we're going to come back around here check that all your valves are off you've got your two main valves this is going to be your main valve for your main water coming in to the actual pump this is going to be the valve that's going to actually be turning on and off the water hose um, so you need to make sure these are in the off position so once you get started you're not spraying water anywhere um, just kind of do a once over again, making sure everything looks like it's supposed to be where it is. Um, you're going to want to check your gas, make sure that you have gas. So this little pin pops, you can flip this forward and it stays there. Your gas can's right here, gas cap, pull it up, check inside. There's a filter, there's enough gas for us to run it. You can always top it off, be generous to the next technician. Make sure it's back on tight. Fold it back up and secure it. Then we're gonna to wanna to grab a rag and we are going to go ahead and check our oil levels, making sure that the machine has good oil. So it's got two dip sticks, both yellow on both sides of the machine. You can use either or. Make sure you clean it off. Obviously we got oil coming out because we're on a hill, but so it's got plenty of oil. Tighten it back down, check that. The other oil level you're gonna to wanna to check is right here. So this is a little sight glass. This is for the pump itself. So about a third of the actual sight glass is where it's supposed to be. So this is a perfect level. Um, you'll actually see when the machine is going, this is gonna spin so you won't be able to see the level while it's going, but once it's done, you can always check it again afterwards, make sure it's good. Um, those are the two oils you need to check. Again, check your gas, make sure you have sufficient gas because it will die out and it, while you're working. Um, so once you've got that done, your next steps are gonna be actually to start setting up the water system for this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your water hose, hook it up to a building, and then what you're gonna do is call purging the system. Purging the system is whenever you're actually getting all the air out of the system to where it's nothing but water coming through. The biggest factor about this is inside of this pump, there are some ceramic discs, and those discs, if they get air inside of there, it vibrates, hits, and you'll actually break those ceramic discs. So you wanna make sure that nothing but water is coming into this. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the building water and we're gonna purge just this line for right now. So we're gonna send it down our makeshift drain here. So that way we're not making a mess. We're gonna let that flow and we're gonna let it flow while we're doing our next steps. So while that's flowing out, give it a minute or two, you'll hear the air difference of it actually spurting, kind of pushing everything through. Once you think you've sufficiently purged this line, what you'll do is you'll come over, cut it, turn it off real quick. Come retract your hose back and you're gonna connect it to the front of the actual machine. Make sure it's got your gasket in there and everything. If not, you're gonna make a mess everywhere. So tighten this guy down. 
You can use channel locks if you need to. You normally don't have to. So we've got that hooked up. It's been purged. We're gonna go ahead and turn on the system. The ball valve to the machine is off. So we can turn this on and it should be okay. Give it another little tighten there. We're all watertight. So right now we have water only coming to this ball valve. So then our next step is gonna be to purge the whole system. So before we purge this line, we need to check and see what type of drain we're gonna be going down. If we're going down a bigger drain. We're gonna be using the, the upper half. Uh, the red hose is gonna go three inch and up. So three inch, four inch, five inch, six inch, whatever you got, that's what you're gonna use for it. We have this other smaller orange hose. This is gonna be for your two inch and smaller. That's gonna be for your kitchen lines. Um, if you got a tub or a shower or something along that. So what you can do today, we're gonna use two inch. So this guy has an actual separation here. It's a quick connect. Quick disconnect, set this guy off to the side, back into your toolkit over here. There is a quick connect adapter for your orange hose. You're gonna come over here, slip this guy on, ready to rock. Use the other end of your orange hose. Quick connect it on, set it up. And then this is your orange hose for running your two inch line. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna check our tip Go ahead and get that secure inside of the drain. So again, we're not making a mess. Get it in there a little bit to where it's gonna flow. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and open up this ball valve. So now what you're doing is you're actually pushing water into the pump. It's coming through. You can hear it on the backside. You'll start seeing water come down your drain. You're purging this line of all of the air as well. You can hear it kind of sputtering. You're gonna give that a minute, let it start doing its thing. Um, if you're gonna be doing the larger hose, it's the same setup, except for you'll just need to turn on this ball valve and again, put your, your uh, water hose into the system. So this guy again is just gonna be for right now off the side, we're gonna do it with the smaller hose. So while you're letting the system purge, you can go look and see what tip you're gonna need to, act to uh, put onto your machine so that way you know what you're doing. So we've got two different tips. For the smaller one, one has a Ford tip with four reverse. The other one has no Ford tip with four reverse. So if you're going into a clog or something of that nature, you're gonna have a Ford push so that we can actually push through that clog and then pull things back. If you're just cleaning the pipe going forward and backwards, you can just use the complete backwards so that way you can actually scour the uh, back into the pipe. So today what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and use the one Ford so that way you can actually see the water pressure going through. Now that we have selected our correct tip, our lines have been purged from the building to this hose. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off. Then we're gonna retrieve our hose tip. And we're gonna go ahead and nicely just secure this on there. Um, try not to use channel locks or anything abrasive on these because you will start to scour the edges and then it's gonna make it hard for the next technician to use. So we have our tip on. What we're gonna do is you're gonna squeeze it in your hand Turn the water on gently. Make sure that all your tips are blowing. There's a cleaner inside of the kit if you have any of the hoses, any of the holes that are not working. So it seems like everything's working on here, so we're clear. We're gonna send it back into the actual drain. We're gonna go ahead and turn that water back on, let it purge just a little bit longer again. And then we're gonna get ready again for our next step, which is now that we have everything designated, we've actually got the hose that we're wanting. Uh, we've got the tip correctly put on and everything of that nature. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come across and uh, start getting set up to actually turn the machine on while it's purging out. You are always gonna want water going onto this pump while the machine is running. So no matter what you're doing, if you're changing tips, anything like that, if you need to turn the whole machine off, you need to turn the water off, but always make sure you have water going on this pump. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over here to the other side. We've done our pre-checks. The machine has been checked for all the fluid levels. Everything's running. Looks like it'll run correctly. So we have a few different things on here. We have your upper level right here is your choke on and off. We have your gas on and off. Whenever you were transporting the machine, you're gonna want the gas in the off position. So just before you're getting done, turn that off, okay? Um, make sure that way if you have a, it tips over, anything happens, you're not spilling anything anywhere. So today we're gonna to be starting it up. So you're gonna go ahead and flip the actual gas on and it's a cold start. We haven't started this today, so we might need to choke it. 
you're gonna flip your choke forward, okay? Sometimes whenever you're restarting the machine, you're not gonna have to choke it. It just depends on how warm you've gotten it. Um, our next deal here is gonna be your throttle, okay? It should be in the all the way off position, but obviously it was not. So we're gonna go ahead and move it up and you'll hear it click. Whenever it clicks, it's just to the edge of actually reading that the throttle is going forward. So you're gonna have it to that position to start. This has two features of different ways to start it, just in case. We do have a key and we also have the pull. So the key is gonna be obviously your easier way. If you happen to lose the key or something's wrong, your battery's dead, you can always do the pull start to make sure you get it going. Today, we're just gonna use the key. So everything's set up for us to go ahead and start it. We've got our water line secure in there. We've got our tip. We've got it, everything's been purged. I've heard the system. You can hear that there's no more air in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start up the machine. Um, normally, whenever you have a, a complete line here, you're gonna wanna have your hand on your actual hose because once you turn it on, you just wanna make sure that you're not, it doesn't run off on you. So we're gonna go ahead and start it up here. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the choke off because it doesn't sound like it need it. All right, so she's starting up slow. First thing in the morning, just like the rest of us, takes a minute to get going. So you'll start to hear it warm up a little bit, let it run at idle just for a minute, and then slowly, slowly start to increase it along the way. So we'll give it a little bit more, give it a little bit more throttle, let it run there for a minute. And really, once you start learning how to use this more and more, you'll know what it sounds like when it's properly running and everything like that. So we're gonna let it warm up sit there for a second make sure that we're not putting too much pressure on the actual machine um, at one time so So she sounds like she's warming up a little bit. We're gonna give it a little bit more. I'm only gonna go about half throttle for the video so that way we're not having to yell over each other. But you can always rev it up as high as you need to depending on what you're doing. If you're using the small line, you really don't have to rev this machine up 100%. If you're using the bigger line, again, you don't have to go 100%. If you can get the job done at a lower throttle and a lower level, then do that. And that way this machine lasts for longer, okay? So we're gonna go about halfway up. That's about half throttle, give or take. Again, we're just doing for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna come across over here. And our next step is gonna be actually to give pressure to the line. So right now, all the pressure we have is just whatever water pressure from the building is coming. So we're gonna go ahead and take a hand onto the line, make sure it doesn't run off on us. And what you're gonna do is your gauge is gonna be at zero, okay? You're gonna to wanna to make sure your gauge is at zero every time you turn off and turn off, and turn on and off the machine, okay? What that does is it allows all the pressure to be released off of this actual pump, so then that way it's not sitting with built pressure. Um, so again, so we're at zero. Whatever you are doing, a smaller kitchen line, you're gonna need it anywhere between 1,000 to 15,000 PSI. Um, if you're using the bigger hose for a larger um, uh, line, you can go up to 3,000 as a max, but try to stay about 2,000 to 2,500. You don't really, again, have to push this machine to the extremes if you don't need it to be there. Um, a lot of the times, especially with this being new, you can go at a lower rate and you'll be able to get the same job done in the same amount of time. So just try to be nice with the equipment, use it for as much as you need it, but don't overstrain it. So we've got everything set up. We're looking around, everything's looking good. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna increase the pressure. This is your knob to increase the pressure. It's got a plus and minus sign. So we're gonna go forward and go up. We're gonna go to 1,000 PSI just for the actual show and tell right here. So you can hear the machine kind of change the sound. Um, it's actually putting on pressure. I can feel it kind of pulling on my hand. So it's actually going and clearing. What you're gonna do at this point is go ahead and jet your line back and forth. Do your cleaning, what you need to do. When you're using the smaller hose, if you need to change tips or uh, take it out and change direction, what you're gonna have to do is shut the whole machine down, but leave the water on. 
So that way that pump has water on it. If you're using the larger hose for that same instance, what you can do is you can throttle the whole machine down to an idle. Then what you can do is you can turn off just this actual valve here. So that way you have water going to the pump, but you actually don't have your hose have water on it. You can change your tip out, change directions, but before you throttle it back up, you're going to want to repurge that system because again, you let air get back into that system. So right now, we've throttled, we've cleaned. Say we're done with this, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let our pressure back down, back to zero. Okay? So now say we need to change tips or we're going to change directions or say you get stuck. Say you're having a tight spot right here. This one actually has a pulse uh, indicator to where you can actually help push yourself through. So what you can do again is you can throttle it back up. Say we're trying to make a hard bend. We're trying to, we're trying to get past a 90 or something that's in your way. What you can do here is this knob, this is a pulse. So it's going to give you kind of a vibration to help you push through that system. Whenever you turn pulse on, it's all the way forward is on. You can see that hose, how it's, it's vibrating. What that's going to do is help you get pushed past that bend. You're not going to want to run it in pulse for very long. You're going to want to just get past your bend and then turn pulse back off. When you turn pulse on and off, you're going to see that you're going to lose pressure because it takes more pressure to turn on pulse. So turn it back off, go past your bend, clean your pipe, and then you're done. You're coming out, you're going to go ahead and shut it back down. Turn your pressure back down. When you turn your pressure back down, you can let go of your hose because it's not actually pulling anything. So then what we're going to do is we're going to come back around. And before we do anything, we're going to throttle it back down just straight to idle, okay? So now we're going to be shutting the machine off. Turn your key. Your machine's off now. We still have the water running. So what you can do is you can come over here, turn your ball valve off. Boom, your water's off. Your levels are at zero, everything's looking good. Next step is for you to go ahead and pull this out. We're gonna retrieve our tip. Sometimes you gotta get a pair of channel locks to get it back off because it does tighten itself back down. So we'll grab a pair of channel locks and be nice about it. We're gonna try to get some smooth teeth channel locks on there, um, but right now we don't. So put something around it to where you're not actually messing it up. Just break that and then Make sure you're putting your tips back where you found them because these are easy to lose. So get it loose. We're gonna go ahead and first thing we're gonna do is go set it back in the box so that way it doesn't get dropped. Don't put it in your pocket, don't put it anywhere else. Um, and then what we're gonna do is go ahead and start cleaning the machine up. Um, everything else is just pretty much the same as we started it up. It's gonna be the exact same opposite. So water's off here. We can go ahead and turn the water off of the building. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and disassemble this orange hose, reconnect the red hose. So take off just the attachment here. You'll end up rolling this guy up in a minute. Take your attachment off of there. Bring this guy back around, hook him back up. And then you're gonna go ahead and unhook the actual water. Let that run out. If you're gonna be transporting it back in your truck, what I would suggest is reopening this ball valve for a minute, let any extra water roll out, make sure it's off whenever you go to go transport it, put your extra tips back. Again, we're gonna be transporting this in a minute, so we wanna make sure that our gas is off. Flip your gas off, go ahead and clean the machine off. Make sure that whenever you're bringing your um, reeling stuff back in, that you're cleaning your hoses off both of them uh, while you're doing it. The uh, best way to do it is I'll usually get a monster towel, put a monster towel in one hand, a dry one in the other, and as I'm pulling it back and forth, it's cleaning and drying at the same time. That way we can keep this stuff as clean as possible. So then that way, uh, when we put it back and the next technician gets it, they're not having any issues with it. Uh, that way also the machine's not smelling or anything like that. We wanna keep this stuff in pristine condition as long as we can. Um, so that's pretty much our process there. Again, we'll roll all the hoses up, clean everything back up. You're gonna put the machine back the exact same way you got it, and you're gonna want it to look even better than what you got it if you're able to. So again, making sure that all the tires don't have mud on them. You're gonna wanna make sure that the hoses are cleaned up. Um, and then again, making sure that everything that came in your kit is there. 
If you lose something, if you break something, if something's not correct, you make sure you let somebody know. Either let your manager know that you who you took it from, let uh, the warehouse managers know, let them know that it's broken, let them know that we can get it fixed. Um, unfortunately, I've had it in the past with the other ones that people will break things or things will be wrong and nobody wants to end up saying anything. Just, just come tell us, let us know that it's broken so then that way we can get it fixed so that way it's not broken for the next technician who needs it and that way we're not wasting any more of anybody's time. Um, things happen, accidents happen, things get lost. It is what it is, um, but it's gonna it's gonna make a longer process if, if we don't know about it. So, um, one of the other things on with maintenance on this machine, what you're gonna want to do because there is no uh, mileage reader or an hour reader or anything like that. So whenever you go and use it for the day, you want to kind of estimate. Hey, I used it for about an hour today. Hey, I used it for two hours. When you return the equipment, whoever you return the equipment to, let them know. Hey, I used this for two hours today because the maintenance on this is by the hours. So if it's been five hours every day that everybody's used it and nobody says anything, nobody's going to know. Again, things are going to get maintained on it, and then we're going to have a bad piece of equipment that nobody gets to use properly. 